pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Jackson Brossi, who is the Assistant Administrator for the Office of Native American Affairs at an agency that we might have just heard about called the Small Business Administration. So um, we appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, Mr. Brossi has experience as being the Executive Director for the Native um, CFDI Network, as well as uh, he is an enrolled member of the Navajo Nation and attended both Stanford and Harvard universities. We know that you have a tremendous um, amount of experience and are so grateful for you to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, really appreciate it and really great to be here and great to be here with you all. Um, uh, one, one thing that's not on my bio is I'm a graduate of Red Mesa High School, which is a really, uh, I think, a wonderful place to go to high school. It's in northeastern Arizona on the Navajo Reservation and, and the place where our, the Navajo president-elect uh, went to high school there, too. So. Um, Jackson So Navajo, my from the Water Flows Together clan, and uh, my family is originally from uh, Luka Chukai and Saley area. And um, usually I see more Navajos in a in a native room, but uh, I don't I don't see as many. I know that Derek was here, um, but uh, I think I, I that's how I was raised to uh, connect with folks, and uh, I look forward. Really, the reason I'm here is I want to connect with you. Um, if I haven't connected earlier, um, I want to get to meet you, get to know you. I feel like the people that are in this room care about the things that I care about, which are increasing opportunity for Native people, uh, helping us not only build, but rebuild our nations all across the country, uh, whether it's in Maine, to Florida, to Oklahoma, to Eastern Band Cherokee, to Lumbee, um, to the Navajo Nation, uh, uh, back out to Alaska. These are things I care about. And I really feel passionately that tools like small business development um, small business opportunity, uh, increasing entrepreneurship in our communities is absolutely vital and effective in, 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 that, in that work. And I, I think that if you came here, you probably fit somewhere in that area, whether you're, uh, uh, let's see, whether you're a individual business owner, we have individual business owners, cool. whether you're affiliated with a tribally owned firm, Cool. Whether you're with a not-for-profit organization, cool. Or, or whether you're with the the feds, oh, the fed, they're all busy working. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I'm a fed, so I, I can make a joke. Um, but yeah, the uh, um, okay. Well, uh, first off, I want to say it's it's really great to be talking with a group of. Native folks and, and Native allies here um, no, in November. Um, a lot of the, it seems like a lot of the work I've been doing lately, have, I've been doing outreach to non-Native groups talking about, um, or people that don't know that much about Native folks, about Native American heritage, about small businesses and stuff like that. And so um, I, it's, it's nice to be in a different setting where uh, not only is it a group of Native folks that I don't really have to teach you that there are 574 tribes across the country that were all very different. Uh, people speak different languages. I don't, I don't have to. I don't have to tell you all that. Uh, you all know it, and you all live it. Um, so it's, it's that's great. And the other great thing that I'm really happy, and I was talking to uh, Chris James about, is it's good to be here because this is a native-owned property. Um, so if you didn't know it, there are three tribes that. Uh, owned this property and, and put it together, you know, I want to say about 12 years ago, maybe 14 years ago, something like that. And uh, it's it's done really well. The Oneida of Wisconsin, uh, Forest County, Potawatomi, and the uh, San Manuel. So um, my hat, my hat's off to them. Yeah. And 
I, I think that's this is a great example of how things can and, and hopefully should work where not only are we investing in our own communities, but we're also investing, diversifying, and, and being in places where people might not otherwise uh, think about, but uh, are important and also strategically located. So I work with the Small Business Administration. Our offices are about three blocks, not even three blocks, two blocks away, uh, really close, right around the corner. So I was able to walk over here. Um, and I, I think that we'll have more of that moving forward. So um, I'm really happy about that. First off, I want to say big thanks to the National Center for your leadership. Uh, you, you guys um, have been a rock uh, in promoting economic opportunity through small business development entrepreneurship for decades. And the platforms that you use and have built have been incredible. I think the um, Reservation Economic Summit, we'll do a raise hand thing. Who's, who's been the Res Summit? Um, yeah. It is, there, there isn't anything else out there like that. And I tell my colleagues at the SBA that uh, if we need to go to one thing where we want to connect with Native American small businesses, uh, that's the place to do it. Um, so I, I, uh, my hats are off to the National Center, uh, Chairman Derek Watchman, um, CEO Chris James, who, who stepped out, and, and, and the rest of the NCAIED team. I know that they've um, been active here. And also, uh, you all have a new office that you co-locate with the Indian Gaming Association, so that's pretty cool. Um, also, uh, in, thanks to their, their PTAC team, too who is an or a side that the SBA we refer folks to and have referred folks to successfully. And I'm th happy to say that there are many uh, great examples. Um, I got just not um, to be somebody who throws out these acronyms. So the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, so that you're aware of that. And uh, you probably already heard from them, but they are the place to go to for free advice uh, if you are looking into getting into government contracting or want to grow your government contracting uh, opportunities. Um, so big thanks to them. Well, uh, uh, I'm here to share that I, my, my message to you is the SBA is here and we want to be a partner. And we stand in a unique time where we have leadership at the SBA that cares deeply about Indian country and we want to make a real difference. Um, and that was uh, evident as soon as I came on board just almost a year ago, where the head of the SBA, Administrator Isabella Guzman, uh, elevated the office that I work in so that I report directly to her. And I guess the inside baseball of that is if there are challenges uh, within the organization, I'm able to talk directly to her and uh, really happy to say that she listens and, and cares deeply about what we do. Not only has she's, uh, made uh, it a priority to do some outreach in Indian country, speaking at multiple uh, res summits. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's any uh, SBA head who's spoken at multiple res summits, but uh, she has. Um, she's also been the first uh, SBA head who went out to the Navajo Nation, um, partially thanks to folks like Derek Watchman's invitation to, to visit the Navajo Nation. And, um, and she was able to meet directly with small businesses there. We had a great round table. We got to talk about some of the challenges that they face uh, being uh, located where they are in rural areas and uh, on reservation, challenges maybe around access to capital, uh, challenges really with uh, things that a lot of the folks take for granted, like mail, like the fact that if you're getting inventory shipped to your place, you might not have a physical address and, and you have to have it shipped somewhere else or you gotta go 45 minutes to go pick it up at the FedEx. So there are a lot of challenges that um, uh, she's uh, actively uh, reached out to, looked to and to find out more about. And so I, I think that, that bringing back to where we are, the SBA is here as a partner and right now is a really opportune time uh, to take advantage and, and bring forward good ideas and, and be partnerships, uh, build this, build the strength in, in partnership. So um, I know you heard a little bit about government contracting, but uh, so the SBA, and that's a huge part of what we do at the SBA. Um, but I want to give you a really high level overview of other parts of the SBA, including government contracting. And we, we like to break it down with, 
uh, three C's and a D. So uh, the SBA, uh, the first C, um, is capital. So access to capital, the SBA can help provide access to capital. What Basically what that means is if you've got a small business and you want to expand, you need some money, I think, er, raise, your, raise your hand if, if you, you wouldn't mind any extra money. Who wants more extra money? I, I do, yeah. Um, well, the SBAs, uh, for the most part, with the exception of a couple of grants, which I, I can talk about in a little bit, um, SBA provides more uh, loans and um, we back loans. And we, for the most part, we at the SBA do not give direct loans, but we guarantee loans uh, through an intermediary or a bank. And um, our, um, our primary... Uh, our, our primary products are some called the 7A and a 504 loan. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about that, check out our website. But you can also go to our website. We have something called Lender Match, and you can just type in your information, what what your business profile looks like, what your interests, what you do, and, and what you might want the loan for, how much you might want it for, and we'd be able to connect you with a bunch of different uh, lenders that are guaranteed, uh, have gu guarantees that the SBA backs that, that hopefully would be able to be able to help you out there. Um, so that's the access to capital piece. Um, government contracting piece is, is a huge piece. Um, and John spoke to it right before I came. But uh, I, I probably don't need to tell anybody in this room that uh, government, government contracting is a huge, huge engine uh, for Native American economies, not only individually owned firms, but also tribally Alaska Native uh, and Native Hawaiian organizations. And um, if you might be with a tribe that is not engaged in that in in that part of procurement as an entity-owned firm in this 8A program, then I highly encourage you to look into that. Um, highly, and if you're an individual-owned firm, I highly encourage you to look into it. If the government is the largest buyer and buyer of goods and services in the entire world, not the entire just U.S. but entire world, and um, it's a marketplace that is competitive, but it's also a marketplace where you as a Native American owned firm or a socially disadvantaged owned firm would be able to uh, uh, stake out a piece. And uh, again, I want to I'll point to our friends, uh, uh, PTAX, um, th are, that are here and able to help with that. Um, so those are two of the three C's. Uh, the last one is counseling and something that we partner here with uh, the National Center on is provide, we provide some grants to uh, different organizations across the country that do counseling for small businesses, entrepreneurs, the type of, really the type of stuff we're doing right now, and also um, on, on the finance side as well. So I'm, I'm really, I spoke a bit about how this is a unique opportune time. It's also a time when we have, uh, thanks to a program called the Community Navigators Program, which uh, we have at least, I think, at least one organization in here. We got Russ in the back who uh, heads up Sequoia Fund um, is, a, a, is a community navigator. And the community navigators is a new program where uh, we now have 40 plus new Native American serving organizations across the country uh, from Maine to South Dakota to Oklahoma to uh, Eastern Band Cherokee uh, to Hawaii to uh, the very tip of Alaska. Uh, that are these uh, um, community navigator uh, partners. And these community navigator partners are able to get a small grant from the SBA and then to, and their goal is to provide training technical assistance for small businesses like yourselves in, in, um, in a number of different ways. Um, uh, folks like uh, Russ and his network, he's affiliated with the OISTA network, um, are focus on giving access to capital to folks via native CDFIs. And so um, we, we helped them with that. We and uh, really proud of that partnership. And we're actually able to meet uh, recently in Cherokee, North Carolina, a week and a half ago uh, and with a number of these organizations and really uh, see the great work that folks like Sequoia Fund are doing. So um, so that that's our counseling piece. And finally, we, we also help out a bit with uh, disasters, natural disasters. And um, I, I hope and I pray that none of your uh, firms find yourself in a situation where you're impacted by natural disasters, but they do happen um, and they are happening more frequently. And so the SBA uh, is able to provide access to capital at a lower interest rate through uh, loans for the most part to uh, businesses that are impacted by natural disasters. So 
hopefully that's something that you can file away and never use, but that is something that you as an American taxpayer uh, have access to uh, with uh, the uh, SBA. So th that's a resource. <clears throat> um, I, I want to, I guess, flag uh, a couple um, things that, that will be coming up. Um, we have any tribal leaders in the in the audience? Okay, cool. Uh, wh where are you from? Okay, again. Okay, great, great, um, awesome. Uh, so the, you you might have heard there's a White House Tribal Nations Summit coming up at the end of this month. Um, every one of the 574 federally recognized tribes uh, is able to send one representative to this meeting on November 30th. So if you have a tribal leader that you want from your community to come out to this meeting, it's November 30th and December 1st. Um, all the cabinet agencies are going to get together and um, connect with tribal leaders and share some of the work that we have been doing, are doing, and will be doing. We'll be announcing some stuff there. I will be announcing some uh, stuff around access to capital. Um, and uh, that really aligned with a lot of the work that uh, at the SBA that we've been taking on just recently. So just this past year, actually, at the Res Summit, we announced something called the Native Lending Initiative, where we're going around uh, connecting with Native American entrepreneurs, uh, Native American lenders, so uh, banks and CDFIs that work in the space, um, and then uh, tribal leaders to con find out where the SBA's programs, most particularly the 7A and the 504 program, are working and working well and where they might not be. And um, so we're, we've done four different listening sessions. One of them was at the Res Summit. Um, we've done one out in Washington State, a number online, and we want to, I guess, continue this. So that's something that I'm interested in talking to folks about later, and we can get my contact information and chat. But I want to make sure that if you're a native-owned entrepreneur that uh, you're able to access every single one of the, the products that other people are able to access. And whether you are uh, in an urban area, like I live right outside of here in Washington, D.C., or whether you're in a, a rural or a reservation or on trust land, you should be able to take advantage of all that. So that's what um, uh, one of the our big initiatives uh, right now. <clears throat> um, and I'm getting close. I've got a quick question. Uh, the uh, Native Lending Initiative. And um, so right now we're in the, uh, I, I guess, investigation phase, in which will eventually turn into uh, some policy recommendations. And I think that we, we have some, uh, we've, we've gotten some good ideas about what, what we can do. But, and that's where we're moving towards. Um, and we will be, I guess one of our things that we, we will be announcing on November 30th is that we're going to be coordinating not just with the SBA's uh, programs, but there are a number of other programs throughout the federal government. Um, anybody here know about the BIA's uh, loan guarantee program? Okay. I, I know we have some people that are really, uh, the, in, the National Center is a big advocate of increasing that loan guarantee uh, fund, but so there are things like that. The USDA has guaranteed loans. Um, HUD has a 184 loan program. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that people are aware of these things and then also find out maybe where are their opportunities to improve them. So, um, and so I'm, I'm coming toward the end of my remarks. And after that, I'll open up for some more questions. Um, but uh, I, I, one thing I, I want to leave folks with is that we, in Native Heritage Month, um, we, we live in a challenging time right now. Um, and I think um, specifically about uh, the federal Supreme Court and the way they're looking at um, the Indian Child Welfare Act and how that is a dark cloud in right now the federal government's relationship with tribes. Um, and I want to share that, uh, and I really don't need to share this with everybody, but I, I'll do it one more time, is that obviously Native people are here because we are resilient. Uh, and uh, we are 
ready to continue to keep our head up and keep moving forward, no matter what the challenges we may face at a certain time. So when I was in uh, Cherokee, North Carolina, a week and a half ago, they have a great museum there, and their museum highlight, um, has a quote from Andrew Jackson. And uh, no, I am not, my name is Jackson, but I'm not named after <laughs> Andrew Jackson. Um, and there's a, there's a, and they have a quote from him, and i um, paraphrasing, but he says that eventually you will be no more, he says to them. And he was absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong. And when I was out there in Cherokee a week and a half ago, not only was he wrong that the Cherokee people are still there, still around, they're thriving, but many of them are still there in the place that he wanted to remove them from. And not only that, they're thriving, they have an incredible economy there, small businesses, a, a great casino. And also, not only that, but we have native people, not only Cherokees, but from everywhere, Navajo from the Navajo Reservation. We had people from Hawaii, people from Alaska, all coming to that, that, that spot. And so, to me, I, um, that was, uh, we're just one of many examples of Native people being resilient, keeping our heads up, and moving forward, and trusting in our future generations. And and um, that's that's where my trust is. And um, I'm happy to say that with the SBA that we're working with right now, that we have great leadership there, who cares uh, deeply about us. And and I want to make sure that I'm an advocate for you, as an individual-owned firm or a tribally-owned firm, or an ally in the space. So with that, thank you, and uh, happy to take any questions.